Yeah, that was like the most depressing and pointless read of the year for me. Hi, hello, my name is Holly Bliss and this is my channel Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and occasionally I do images about it. Today I'm doing a wrap up across September and I will be going through some of the books which I have read as well as some of the ones which I have been less successful with this month. I've had a, a more turbulent month, I would say. <laughs> um, uh, I think also coming off uh, the extreme high of just having the time to just indulge in reading during the summer holiday um, just meant that I could concentrate more and enjoy my reading experience. Whereas now I'm back at work, I'm in that horrifying place where you've got too many emails and too many deadlines which you're pushing through and everything's just had to kind of pause. So uh, a lot of the reading has kind of gone blah, 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 uh, and uh, <laughs> I've had to shift where I've found places where I can steal moments for myself to, to do my reading. Uh, so I should just throw myself straight into it. The first one which I want to talk about is Salvation Army, which is by um, uh, Adela um, Taya, uh, I think uh, me and Sean decided, but I buddy read this with Sean, um, Sean the book manic, um, and uh, I was really up for, for just sharing some joy with the lovely Sean, but neither of us actually enjoyed this one, which is a little bit of a shame because this is um, the first um, Moroccan uh, autobiographical experience of being out um, as an openly gay author um, in Morocco. So in terms of the piece of writing, it's really significant, uh, particularly in a, a, a place uh, which is very dangerous to be openly gay. Um, it, it kept on pushing and pulling us in different directions and there were some points where I was just kind of like, why, why are we here? And also, they kind of did little character studies of individuals which didn't really seem to have like much connection to the overall uh, portrayal of what was being captured in this book. Like, there was a bit of a missed opportunity within this book that it, it just, <laughs> it was just, it was just that kind of coming, a gentle coming of age story where something that clearly had a quite an important impact on him uh, not didn't necessarily translate to something which was a really compelling read for me personally and I feel a bit like uh, bad for almost taking that away from him in terms of saying it's not important it is important and it's um, it, it was a bold read in that sense um, but at the same time I was kind of like am I actually interested in this? And I think Sean felt the same as well. Um, so it was just a little bit disappointing really overall. So the next one um, is incredibly special. It was probably a highlight of the month for me. Um, but I did this as a buddy read with Milena, who um, some within the booktube community may well know. She's very active in commenting on different people's um, channels and she's very engaged in the community um, but it was really really lovely to read this book with her and um, so we um, buddy read uh, History is All You Left Me and it was just beautiful and crushing and uh, a real journey um, it was a real pleasure to do it um, with um, Elena and we um, because uh, it was interesting because we've um, not both read before and um, uh, so we were coming into the situation as uh, kind of strangers and by the end of it just felt like I'd learned a lot about her in a very short amount of time um, and we really shared different things um, which were wider parts of um, History Is All You Left Me. So the main construct of the story is about the death of Theo and um, so Theo's dead and gone um, and it's happened recently and Griffin who was in a relationship with him um, is feeling lost and quite vulnerable um, because uh, his ex has gone and um, he uh, is pu putting the pieces back together for himself and um, through that he uh, ends up at the funeral connecting with Jackson, who is Theo's current 
partner before he then died. It was also nice to do this with Melina because um, Griffin is going through this process of grief where he's trying to build up an understanding of what's happening and he does this through connecting with Jackson and through the dialogue with Jackson who he previously saw as his enemy and this other person who's basically taken Thea away from him suddenly becomes his confidant and someone who he can lean on during this process of grief because he is literally the only other person who truly understands what he's going through having both of them loved Theo so deeply. It also enables them to piece together what their relationship meant to them um, and what Theo, uh, who Theo was to each of them and how he was different as well. Um, and that's something so true about that in terms of how we are different with different people all the time. Um, but it was really uh, interesting to see that journey in terms of how it's all um, revealed and how it's laid out. Griffin is a flawed character in um, some very vulnerable, uh, lovely ways as well. Um, but it makes him more real in terms of what those flaws are and he is actually quite a selfish character throughout the book in terms of it could, because he is so fixated on this death and how it's impacting on him that he is losing a sense of how he is impacting on others around him through that process. Um, and then that, of course, causes more tension. And um, Jackson is also experiencing some of those things and not understanding what some of his friendship group are going. And they become exposed to that um, with each other. And I thought all of that was quite powerful teaching because this is a YA novel. Um, and if I picked this up as a kid, it, like, it, it literally gives you a, a pathway in handling grief in one way, <laughs> which is a, like a, a, a weird thing to kind of even talk about because we don't talk about death enough, I don't think. Um, and we shared some of that because um, uh, I became aware of um, death cafes and their role and uh, we were talking about how that is uh, an interesting support mechanism, how we don't embrace death, it's that taboo subject, we, um, and uh, I think I have quite a weird relationship with, with death where I want to discuss it but uh, I, I'm respectful of other people's feelings, um, so it's kind of a, a complicated terrain to navigate through, um, but it's something that is going to happen to everyone, it is the one truly universal thing that, that is going to happen to us all. So it was really, really interesting to be able to bounce thoughts and feelings as you were going through that process. So if you're like looking for things to buddy read, I think it's a really good one, but you, you would need someone who is willing to go on that journey with you. It's certainly one which has had like a, a deeper impact on me personally, um, and I think that would be shared as well. Um, but it is just a really well written, really thought through book, which um, has drama, is educational, um, and it is powerful, uh, basically. And then following on from that one, uh, afterwards I did another buddy read. I actually did a buddy read with my partner, um, Craig, because um, we were driving down um, to the very southerly south part of the country um, to visit uh, my mum's side of the family. She has three brothers. All three were there, they've all got kids, their kids have kids now, which was crazy because um, some of them are getting older now and it makes you go, <laughs> um, it's, all, it's all very terrifying and confusing for me to see a new generation of us around um, and to actually see my cousins acting as parents, that's hilarious. And uh, it gave us the perfect opportunity to listen to a book as we were going down and after having um, I'd done the buddy read uh, with Milena where I wanted to also read uh, They Both Die in the End. So I was on a proper uh, death train, but <laughs> party of one. Um, and so I continued that with Craig with this book. Um, so it's all in the title. This was a recommendation actually last year from Chris Vigilante. I'll add um, a link to that video. Uh, and I finally got round to um, listening to it and reading it. Um, 
but it's brilliant as an audio book because it chops between two lead characters who are going to die in the end. Um, you've got uh, Rufus and you've got Matteo, um, and you, you, um, I think you kind of really you lead in with Matteo at the start of the book, um, and Rufus is kind of the compliment to him, if that makes sense. There's just there's less of uh, Rufus in comparison to Matteo, I think, through the course of the book. Um, but so there's basically deck cast system, which will tell you first thing in the morning, midnight to one o'clock, that this is going to be your death day. Um, and you have no control about how you're going to go, when you're going to go, um, what's going to happen to you. You don't get to know that, you just get to know that you are going to die. And it's about how you then use the remaining time that you have. And some people could have minutes, and other people will have the rest of the day. Um, so that they both get this call, and they're in very different uh, situations in their life together because they're strangers at the start of the book, but they spend this one incredible day together. Um, but I just I wasn't prepared for it to be so nice and so like uplifting, um, and it really makes you kind of go, go out and live, live your true self, and have a wonderful time. <laughs> If you want to be a dog, you know? Yep, you got it, that's me. Because you don't know where it's going to go, um, and there is this constant presence of fear, because in this book, um, death is the ultimate um, antagonist to the uh, situation, um, and it's constantly around them. They do things during the course of the day which um, make them think and reflect about what's actually important in life and what's interesting in, in the book is that there, there are some set artificial experiences which are fun but they're safe and um, how because there is this safety net with them they almost feel like hollow experiences which aren't truly lived and I found that quite an interesting experience in terms of how we need a bit of fear in our lives and we need a bit of adventure and risk to make us feel truly alive. But during the course of their day, uh, um, Rufus is taking pictures and he starts taking them in black and white and then as his life um, is enhanced, they turn to colour. Um, and there's all sorts of reasons behind that. I don't want to spoil those reasons, but it's it's very poetic and uh, beautiful. But uh, right towards the end of the, the book, he references um, his Instagram account. And I was like, I wonder if that's real. And then it was, and I checked it out, and I wasn't ready for it. And they clearly like set up different scenes to reflect the passages in the stories. And that ruined me. That absolutely ruined me. Um, but I did also do a little sketch, which I'll add. This is when they are on a, a subway train heading over to their next destination, but um, it's now very early hours in the morning, but uh, because they've been up since 12 o'clock, it's uh, a moment where uh, Matteo can have a little bit of a nap, and he's been building with Lego um, a sanctuary. Um, at, at, and he, he actually wanted to be an architect when he... Um, where he grows up and stuff and so he's just it's there cradled in his hand as he's taking this little bit of rest and Rufus is um, just observing him in that moment and that kind of carries on throughout uh, the story uh, in really beautiful nuanced ways and I don't want to go too far but yeah it, uh, I am very thankful to Chris for recommending that story um, because it was epic um, and it was surprising, uh, and it was a very different type of adventure, um, and again, very powerful uh, in terms of the, having those two experiences, those two books near, near to each other. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> so, the next one was probably one of my most disappointing reads, which I've had in a while. Um, oh, God. 
This is The Swimming Pool Library by Alan Hollinghurst. Now, I am actually quite a fan of Alan Hollinghurst's work. I have read The Spell, and I have read um, The Sparkle Affair, and I have read The Line of Beauty, and I really enjoyed each of those books. This book, I, I did not enjoy this book. I mean, I did enjoy aspects of this book, but to be honest with you, I felt like I was listening, because it was an audio read, I felt like I was listening to some sort of upper class porn. It was just, it was really weird. Because <laughs> like, it's, it's just, it, it, it went nowhere as well, and it like, but there was just these repeated, like, sex sessions that were happening between random men, and it just kept on going in different places, and it would just crop up, and uh, it just kept on happening. And I, 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 like, sometimes I was kind of like listening to it, going, oh my god, stuff is happening, and I'm just in public, um, and uh, kind of like laughing to myself. And other times I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> like move the story forward or why 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 do you have to have sex with this person again or this other person why do i have to listen to this and it just got really really repetitive it's like 12 hours and 23 minutes um uh where the story <laughs> just trying to like even piece it back together i was just like Am I just really missing the point of this book? And probably I am, but at the same time, I don't think it was communicated that clearly what it was all about, other than casual hookups throughout the story. So yeah, that was like the most depressing and pointless read of the year for me. <laughs> and I feel really bad for saying that because I really, really enjoyed all his other books. Uh, and I think that's why I'm more disappointed, because I just didn't enjoy it as much as I had other books. But yeah, that, that, that was, that was some, that, that was just a, a long, a long ride that didn't seem to ever end. So yeah, I've had this quite provocative month um, in, in terms of my reads, uh, and it's been really epic. And I'm really looking forward to getting into Victober next month. And I've got some other cool buddy reads lined up as well. Um, I'd be fascinated to know if you've read any of these, what your thoughts are. Um, let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe because then you'll see when my next video will be up because I'm really unreliable and um, they just come up when I've got my self in order and uploaded one. So until then, see you again soon. Bye.